I've recently got my hands on some long burn rocket motors, which gave me a thought. Is it possible to build a rocket powered helicopter? Whoa! This video was sponsored by Wondrium. More about them later. I know what you're thinking. James, why are you trying to make a spinning disc of fire and rotor blades when you already came close to being taken out by the last helicopter you designed? Well, yes, but a lot of you enjoyed that project and also want me to make more rocket themed projects, so why not put these two things together? What I've come up with is a simple flying device inspired by the humble helicopter seed. These seeds have inspired man-made rotorcraft such as the monocopter, which is a vehicle where the entire aircraft rotates. So my final design is a free flight monocopter, which when ignited will just spin off on its own volition and uh, fly up into the sky with no control whatsoever. It's very simple, but to get something like this to work, turns out it takes a few iterations and quite a lot of patience. The first version was totally different to the final version that I came up with, as it wasn't a monocopter at all. It comprised of multiple lifting surfaces within a disc. On the outside, there were two rocket motors opposite each other. The way rocket motors work is through burning a solid propellant that contains an oxidizer within the fuel. This means that when you set fire to them, a reaction occurs and loads of gas is forced through a small nozzle which provides thrust in the opposite direction. These rocket engines are similar to what you'd find in fireworks and also the much bigger model rockets and Two, rocket planes that you might one, have seen on my channel before. Yeah, look at that. I catted all of this design up in about 20 minutes on Fusion 360 and then printed the entire helicopter out in one go on one of my Ender 3 3D printers. A special shout out to these things, they're just so reliable and affordable and you can just leave them for hours and they almost always do the job. After two hours of printing, I had a full helicopter ready to be popped off the print bed. So would it fly? Well, my first problem was that, as it turns out, it's quite difficult to get two motors to light at once, especially when it's a bit breezy. I decided to try and use an electronic ignition system. Three, two, one. Uh, oh, he's just shorted out a bit then. <laughs> um. <coughs> Five, four, three, two, one. goes one of the motors. If igniting two motors was going to be so much of a problem, instead I thought I should build a lighter aircraft that only needs one motor lit with a fuse. So I went back to the good old helicopter seed instead of trying to design something completely new. What should I use as a rotor though? I could simply use a broken propeller from an RC plane, which is already the perfect shape to be used as a monocopter wing. So I took this out to the launch pad and went to see if I could get any degree of success from it. Oh, and then auto rotating back to the ground. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect it to work that well. Talk about inherent stability. Wow, that was awesome. I should try this at night, that would be good. With the first flight a success, I could now iteratively experiment with it before going back to the drawing board with what I've learned and start on a version three. Whoa! One issue I'd found concerned the center of rotation versus the center of gravity. Previously, I'd used the center of gravity as the fulcrum point, but as the craft starts rotating, you can actually see that the rotation point is not where the center of gravity is when at rest. The reason for this is due to lots of aerodynamic and gyroscopic forces, so I needed to redesign the aircraft to put the hole for launching the helicopter where this natural rotation point is, rather than the center of gravity, and then cut up a proper arm which connects the motor to the rotary wing to find the precise center of rotation for efficient launches. Now, I really wanted to find out how high and how far these helicopters would actually fly, but for that I needed to go to a bit of a bigger area to make sure I didn't lose them, and then I could let them rip with various different sizes and powers of rocket motors. Before that though, it's time for a quick ad from the sponsor of this week's video, Wondrium. If you've got to this point in the video and are, like me, interested in learning about all sorts of scientific and engineering subjects, you'll probably also like the video platform Wondrium. On Wondrium you can find the answers to all the 
things you've ever wondered about, and some things that you've never imagined before. Their carefully curated collection of short and long form videos, tutorials, how to's, travel logs, documentaries, and more is academically comprehensive, thoroughly researched, entertaining, and presented by engaging experts. I'm really enjoying this documentary about Solar Impulse, which is a solar powered aeroplane, and this documentary has just been so interesting with all the technical details of the aircraft and the pilot's experience of flying it across the US. My favourite part so far has just been where the pilot has crossed over Edwards Air Force Base for the first time, which is where Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. If you've ever wondered about anything, Wondrium will be your new favourite place. And also you should know that they're giving you, as the viewer, a chance to get a great offer with a free trial. If you want to support my channel and also learn lots of stuff, then make sure to go to wondrium.com slash projectair or visit the link in the description to start your free trial today. Right, so what's the maximum performance of these little helicopters and how far will they go? First up, it's the smaller motors, the L1s, which are a bit lighter, before we move on to the higher power uh, L2 motors. Hopefully those higher power motors don't rip the helicopter apart. I'm fairly confident it'll be okay, but you never know with videos on this channel. The first launch with the lower power motor propelled the aircraft to a decent altitude before it auto-rotated back down to earth. Oh, just hit the top of that tree. <laughs> I repeated this test a couple more times to see if the results were similar. Whoa! <laughs> it's so exciting! All right, I had three successful flights with the, um, the small power motors, so now I'm going to try the bigger ones. So let's see if we can get some higher altitudes and some longer flight times. Either that or it's just going to break. Oh no! Oh, it's crashed. <sighs> well, we only have one more, so let's see if this one will do it with a big motor. Whoa! That has gone for miles! Wow, that has gone so far! Oh, I think it's gone so far that it's gone right the other side of those trees over there. Although I couldn't repeat this test, it seems that higher power motors allow this helicopter's design to fly for a longer duration, go further, and also accelerate super quickly. Just so you know, I've got loads of these rocket motors left, so um, the question is now, what do you want to see me build next? There's a link below if you want to find out where I got these rocket motors from, by the way. Also, if you like this video, then make sure to go and check out more videos on my channel because there are loads of rocket-themed ones on there. I'm sure you'll enjoy those if you've got to this point in the video. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.